Before we kick off the second half of this video series, I want to take the opportunity to introduce myself. My name is Terry Vinson. I'm a consultant and a technology trainer who focuses specifically in the software-defined networking space, whether that's going to be Cisco ACI, whether it's going to be Cisco SDA or SD-WAN, or whether it's going to be VMware NSXT. These technologies, I personally think, are driving the future of networking and leading us towards the natural tendency to move towards automation and leveraging the power and the capability of programmability as it exists in our network infrastructure. If you're getting anything out of these videos, I would greatly appreciate it if you would take the opportunity to like the video and possibly go ahead and subscribe so that you'll receive notifications when I create more videos. While the DNA Center is installing its software, what I want to do is I want to go ahead and SSH to the Maglev operating system using the user ID of Maglev, and I'm going to go to 10.1.97.101, and I'm going to access the reserve port of 2222. This is going to ask me to log into the DNA Center, and I'm going to use the ICE is cool password that we implemented, and it should present me with the console access to the Maglev appliance, aka the DNA Center. Now, we are running in the background installation services. I'm going to demonstrate that by typing Maglev package status, and I'm going to hit enter, and what we're going to see is the system is in the process of deploying core operational configurations or preparing to deploy core operational packages. These are going to represent the devices and the resources that we're going to be using to offer DNA center services. Now, what I also want to do is I am going to enter a command which is going to be the magctl and what I want to do is I am going to want to get a list of all of my app stack resources and I want to look at their status. Now app stack is going to make reference to the application stack of resources, which is going to refer to my Docker containers. And I'm going to go ahead and say, enter here, and what we're going to see is, is an instance of many, many Docker containers that are running in the background of this specific server. These resources work together to allow me to be able to offer the capabilities that the DNA Center provides. The DNA Center provides principally what we refer to as the Cisco network platform configuration as well as the Cisco control platform configuration. These are going to offer us at the end of the day automation and assurance features and functions. So all of this is made possible using all of these Docker containers. And I want you to note that the majority of these Docker containers are running addresses in the 172.16.0.0 or the 172.16.8.0 slash 21 network that we created when we assigned these resources. And like I said, this process is actually going to take hours to complete, I just wanted to go in and give a demonstration of exactly what is happening in the background. Now, if you try to employ servers that are going to be low powered, in other words, they don't have sufficient RAM or they don't have sufficient CPU in order to be able to instantiate all of these Docker instances that are going to be running in the k 8 deployment that were installing on this server, you're going to run into a number of problems where you're going to have containers that are going to be listed as pending, or you're going to have Docker containers that are going to be in what we refer to as a crash loop back off. These are telltale signs that you do not have ample resources to support this ecosystem that we're building. And the easiest and most reliable way of being able to do that um, to overcome those issues for me personally, it was to just simply add the additional resources. I fought tooth and nail trying to stop and restart containers and bring instances up separately, killing old instances, reinstantiating new instances, and it just became so burdensome that I gave up the idea of trying to build this in a virtual 
CPU or a virtual 48 CPU or logical 48 CPU environment. So moving to 62 gave me the capability of being able to stop my struggle with this platform. And ultimately, what I want to see is I want to see all of these Docker containers that I'm going to be running to be operating in a running state. If I were to say magctl app stack status pipe and say grep and look for pending, I'm hopefully not going to see any resources that are in the pending state. Another thing that I could also check for is going to determine whether or not anything is in the crash state. And Ideally and optimistically, we should not see any of these resources show up in any of these two conditions. Now, that does not mean to say that it might not happen in the future, but if it does, we'll deal with it. At this particular juncture in time, we can see that the console instance for the DNA Center running in my ESXi installation is showing that I should now be able to log in, and if I return to the configuration and refresh my maglev package status output, we can see here that we have a number of packages that are not deployed. We have a number of packages that are deployed. And what we're going to do now is we are going to see if we can access this device from the graphical user environment by browsing to 10.1.97.101 and logging in. If everything goes well, the admin ICE is cool credentials should give me access to my primary console. Now, what I'm going to do is I am going to go ahead and make this full-sized. I'm going to skip the configuration with regard to changing my passwords. I'm going to skip the inclusion of my CCO ID. I'm going to skip the IP address manager config. We're not going to be running proxy. And I'm going to go ahead and say next and agree to the terms and ask the system to send me to the system 360 console. Looking at what we have here, we can see that we have 118 services that are running. If I click on this, this is going to show me, again, a representation of those Docker containers that we looked at earlier. We can see that our application health is for automation green, for assurance green, but we are not done yet. And I know that by looking up here to the little cloud icon for software updates, we can see that I have six applications that need to be downloaded. Now, I'm going to use the graphical user environment for this by going to my software updates window. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell the system to go ahead and download all of these. Now, if I look at my icon here for my about, what we're going to see is I am running version 1317. But there are some key and critical features that are missing. Among them, I do not have the ability to use SD access as far as implementing a fabric. Let's check that out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my provision, and you'll notice that there is no fabric tab. The reason that there is no fabric tab is based on the fact that I have not installed SDA fabric features yet. So this process is going to get me one step closer to allowing that to happen. So if I look at the packages that I'm going to download, what we're going to see here is, is I'm going to be downloading AI network analytics, application hosting, assurance for sensors, automation along with intelligent capture, rogue management, and wide area bonjour. I'm going to go ahead and say continue, and the system is going to ask me for my CCO. And hit continue. And as a result of the completion of that information, the system should begin to download these new images. Right now it hasn't started yet, but as soon as we start getting any kind of indication as far as progress on this, we will go ahead and pause the video and pick it back up once it's completed. Additionally, while I'm waiting, let's go ahead and repeat the command of show package status, and we should see that there's currently nothing going on with regard to the packages themselves, even though we can see this information is indeed going to be downloaded. 
what we will find is, is when the time comes for us to install these packages, that's when this is actually going to be triggered until such time that we go through and handle that installation. We will just simply wait for the user interface to report that it's completely downloaded all of the information. We can see at this time that the process has completed. And what we are now going to do is we are going to implement the install all where we're going to select every one of these packages and we are going to include them for installation by highlighting each and selecting continue. And that will put the system back into an installation process as soon as it gets kicked off. What we're going to do is we're going to validate that we see that the packages are being updated from the CLI. And then what we'll end up doing is we'll end up having to wait again for about an hour or more. So with this process in the beginning, let's go ahead and say show or look at the Maglev status. And we can see that we are indeed installing and pending deployment of these features. This process, again, will take a little while to complete. Once we go into the actual deploying state, we'll notice that we'll get a large process bar at the bottom of this screen. If I return to the graphical user interface, we see that we're you know, about 10% of the way in accordance with the resources. Also note that we got a yellow bar on the top of our well, orange bar, on the top of our DNAC user interface, which is going to basically warn us that we are now no longer green as it relates to assurance and automation. Now, that's going to be remedied as soon as we have completed this process. But again, we have to be patient. As a direct result of that, let's go ahead and see where we stand on the CLI. And now we can see that we have a workflow progress. When this completes, what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to return for the third part of this video. And what we will do is we'll finish up building the DNA center and we will get our corresponding snapshots so that we don't have to go through this process again. Also, I would recommend that if you want to go to another version, I will be staying with 1317. But if you want to go through another version, you can go through that update process. But please make certain that you have a valid snapshot of the system as it's going to exist before you start that upgrade, just in case you have to do a recovery. So I'll see you guys in part three of this video series. Until then, I hope this has been helpful.